Welcome back, learners, to another informative programming video. In this video, we're going to be learning about vectors. A vector is like if an array and a function had a baby, because it has characteristics from both. It can store a list of items, like an array, but the way that you interact with the vector object is by using functions. I love vectors, and you're going to love them too. So enough of this intro, let's just get to the good stuff. We previously learned about the concepts of functions and arrays. Here I've used two columns to call out some identifying characteristics for each. Now I said earlier that a vector is like if an array and a function had a baby, which means that baby vector is going to have characteristics from both parents. What we're going to do now is we're going to go down each of these lists and pull the right characteristics from each parent concepts into this middle column here to describe a vector. So, let's go ahead and start with Papa Array. First we've got stores a list of values. Can a vector do this? Heck yeah it can! Next we have uses indexing to access those values. Does a vector work in the same way? You betcha! How about updating the values that are stored? Can a vector do that? Yes siree and ma'am it can! And finally, an array must be given a size, and it is always going to be that size. Does this also apply to vectors? Actually, no. Vectors are never assigned a size. They can store infinite elements or no elements at all, so its size is going to be flexible. Now we can take a look over here at mama function. She has a data type. Do vectors have data types? Yes, they do. Just like when we declare a function, or an array, when we go to declare our vector, we're going to need to give it a data type. Now, what about using parentheses? No. On their own, unlike functions, vectors do not have parentheses as part of their syntax. However, moving on to our next one, the ability to pass data in parameters, this one is a yes, or rather, a sort of yes. To use vectors in C++, we're going to need to include the vector library as part of our program. The vector library lets us declare our vector object, but also gives us access to all of the vector functions, which are what we're going to use to interact with our vector, like adding values and things like that. Okay, now we're going to hit the keyboard here in just a minute, but first let's review our characteristics of a vector. Can we, uh, can we get this cleaned up for a minute? Much better. Okay, thank you. So, let's go ahead and review these real quick, and these are all the characteristics of a vector that we have blended from functions and arrays. So first, our vector is going to store a list of values, which is going to be managed through indexing. We can update and change those values. Our vector is going to need a data type, which means that all the values being stored in the vector have to match that same data type. We're going to interact with our vector using vector functions, which are part of the includes vector library that we'll put at the top of our program. So with all this in mind, we're ready to pop over to Visual Studio where we're going to build out a program that analyzes an array of 10 random numbers. If any of those numbers are greater than or equal to 42, we are going to add that value to a vector. At the end of the program, we're going to display how many numbers we've put in our vector and then print each of them out to our console. Ready to roll your sleeves up? See you on the other side. All right, here we are in Visual Studio, where we're going to be writing up a program that will analyze an array of 10 random numbers. If any of those numbers are greater than or equal to 42, we're going to add that number to a vector. At the end of the program, we're going to display how many numbers we have in our vector, and then print each of them out to the console. Now I've already declared our array and set up the logic to initialize it with 10 random numbers. So here I've declared our array as a, an array of integers with our size variable, which is equal to 10. And then here I'm using our classic for loop to uh, iterate through each of those 10 values and initialize them with a random number 0 through 100. Now we know from earlier in the video that to even be able to use vectors and even declare it, we're going to need our vector library. So let's go ahead and start by including that in our program. All right, so now we can go ahead and declare our vector. 
the syntax for declaring a vector is very similar to other declarations that we've made in C++. We've got a data type, we're going to assign a name, and since a vector is a programming object, we're also going to declare an object type. Unlike file objects that have of stream and if stream, vector objects only have one form, so it is just the vector type. Okay, so let's go ahead and declare our vector. So first we're going to name the object type, and then we're going to put our carrots here to give the vector a data type, and we are going to do ints. And now, since this is going to be storing the numbers from our array, let's go ahead and name it stored nums. Now remember, one of the beautiful things about vectors is that they don't have a defined size. So unlike our array here, we don't need to put any sort of size in the declaration. We are all finished. All right, so we've got our array of 10 random numbers, and now we've got our vector. Next, we need to figure out how we're going to check our array for numbers that are greater than or equal to 42. And if they are, we want to take whatever that number is and store it in our vector. We got a lot of ifs going on here, so it seems like we're going to need an if statement. And since we need to check all of our array values, we'll need our handy dandy for loop to iterate through that entire array. So I'm just going to make another for loop here to iterate through our array. And then here is where we can put our if statement. And what should our condition be? Well, we know that here we're checking our array to see if whatever value that iteration is on is greater than or equal to 42. So here we're going to have our greater than or equal to 42. If we wanted to add a value to an array, we would write it out like this. And this is pretty standard syntax, right, for initializing something with a value, because we've got our value here on the right side, and it's going to assign to whatever is over here on the left. With a vector, though, we're going to do it a little bit differently. To add a value to our vector, we are going to use a vector function. Remember I said that vector functions are how we interact with the vector object. So to take advantage of those functions, we are going to call the vector that we want, which for us is stored nums. And then we're going to put a period here. Now this allows us to access functions for this vector. So we can see here we're being prompted with a couple. The one that we want to add a value is the pushback function. So we just type that out here, pushback, and then because it's a function we need our parentheses. Now like any other function, here between the parentheses is where we put the value that we want to pass to that function. Since the pushback function adds value to a vector, that means that whatever value we want to add, we're going to put here. Now that's going to be whatever value we're on for our current array iteration, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and put in here our, the name of our array, and then I will take care of that index for whatever our current placement is. And then we can go ahead, our semicolon. So in English, this says to take our stored nums vector and add to the very back of the list, the last element in the list, whatever the current value is at the current index we're at for our array. Okay, so now we've got our logic that will iterate through our array of random numbers, check the values to see if they're greater than or equal to 42, and if they are, that value will be added to the list of numbers that we've got going in stored nums. So let's go ahead and just call those values. Let's go ahead and start printing those. So we're going to use another for loop. And then we're just going to see out this. Now with the vector, to call the values within, we don't need any sort of function. We're just going to use standard array syntax. So. Okay, and there's our index, and let's put each of these on their own line. Okay, great. Let's run this baby. Okay, and we got a runtime error. So what's this say? The vector subscript is out of range. Well, if we look over here on the console, 67, 69, these numbers are all greater than or equal to 42, so that logic seems to be working, but why are we getting an error? It says that we're moving out of range. So let's go ahead and go back to our code here. Now, we did not see 10 numbers printed on the console. Here in this for loop, I'm using the size variable 
because that's what we've been doing so far, right? But remember, vectors, they don't have a set size. So I tried to iterate through 10 times here, but we didn't have 10 numbers in our vector. And so it was telling us that at some point, that index here increased beyond the indexes of what the vector currently had. So what we're going to do is instead of using the size variable, we just want to iterate through our vector for whatever size it is, whether it be two numbers or 10 numbers, we just need to go through whatever the current size is. So we are going to use the vector function size. So remember to call vector function, we're going to go ahead and call our vector and then put a period. And now here you can see it's showing me size. So I'm just going to type size and of course parentheses. Now I don't need to put anything in here. This will just go ahead and iterate through whatever the size of the vector currently is. So let's run this one more time. Okay, perfect. No errors. And we can see here that we're still getting correct values. Okay, great. So we're moving along perfectly. So the very last thing that we've got to do is to actually just display to the console how many values got added to our vector. So let's go ahead and get a cout statement going here. And now, what do you think that we are going to do to display the size? Well, we've already done it once before. We're going to use our size function right here in line. All right, excellent. Let's run this baby. All right, so what do we got here? 67, 69, 78, 58, 62, 64, all correct. Our vector has six elements in it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Awesome, perfect. So what we've just done in our program, I hope was a great demonstration of how to use vectors and vector functions. Before I let you go, I wanted to show you this list that I have here on c++.com. So you can look this up yourself. You can just Google C++ vector functions. And this is a list of all the vector functions that we can use. So obviously I can't cover all of these with you, but I do encourage you to take a moment to go and look at these and look them up and play around with them. Here we can see size, we use that. Down here we've got pushback to add an element to the very end. If you wanted to delete an element, there's the pop back function. There's really a lot of great stuff here that I think just really illustrates why vectors are such an awesome and powerful tool. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed learning about vectors with me today. This is gonna be our last video in the Introduction to Programming series and I want you to know how proud I am of you for making it this far. We have covered a lot of content and learned a lot of skills. If you only remember one thing from this whole series, let it be this. The skills, talents, and abilities that you have in your life are just like a vector. You can add to it endlessly. Your imagination is the limit. Go get them, tiger.